Hello everyone, welcome to the story channel. And today we are going to talk about life on Mars. <laughs> life on Mars. So, this channel is basically for uh, discussing movie reviews, but uh, since sci-fi and things related to science are so much interesting and uh, so much involved in the movie business as well, <laughs> uh, we have to talk about something, some, some of these interesting really interesting uh, topics. Uh, for the last few days, uh, there has been some kind of commotion about life on Mars that somebody, uh, some uh, journal paper has seen uh, the, they're releasing some photos that uh, that show mushrooms growing on Mars. So here I'm on just uh, looking through the website and here is uh, an excellent article at sciencealert.com that says, here is the truth about the photo of mushrooms growing on Mars by Carly Casella, uh, 29th March 2019. A peculiar new paper published in a little-known scientific journal has the tabloids stirred up about the possibility of life on Mars. Uh, according to this paper, an international team of scientists are now claiming, are now claiming to have found evidence of mushrooms growing on the surface of the red planet. Now, I, 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 can't, I can't see say anything about this article because uh, this writer, Kali Casella, uh, <laughs> she's also a, a funny person uh, because uh, she is uh, a proclaimed feminist with a she, her in her bio. So people who have she her in their bio are like <laughs> they're, they're very very doubtful about their own gender and everything. So Carly Casella is uh, um, probably some girl who is herself a little uh, confused. So we uh, we can't say anything about her. But uh, let's go what she wants to say in this article that she says that international uh, there's an international team of scientists that are wrong. They are wrong because they uh, see mushrooms in the on the surface of the red planet. Uh, okay, okay. Let, let's see how much wrong they can be. The evidence is primarily based on images taken by NASA's Curiosity and Opportunity rovers, which capture a bird's eye view of what look like well mushrooms. Bird's eye view of mushrooms, but. The photo does not look at all like it's a bird's eye view. It's, it's, it's a pretty big photo. It's a pretty big photo. It's not exactly a bird's eye view, I think, but uh, I, I think it's close enough. Still, I can't really say about NASA lenses. Uh, the pictures have, have the internet freaking out as stories like this usually do, but some folks online remain uh, justifiably skeptical. Uh, <laughs> and right now, I'm very skeptical to the writer of this article too, uh, because she has a she her. <laughs> she has to tell everybody that she is a she her. <laughs> uh, uh, it's often said that you shouldn't judge a book by its cover, but you can partially judge a scientific paper by its journal. Just one glance at the Journal of uh, Journal of Astrobiology and Space Science website, and it's pretty clear to see that this isn't a sophisticated outlet uh, for high impact science. Uh, wait, wait. Uh, have you really seen the journals and uh, websites of technical departments? Have you really seen ever? I have, I have. And let me tell you, uh, the journals and websites of actual government, of actual government websites, they are miserably kept. They're miserably kept all around the globe. Actually, uh, today, if you see a very shiny, shimmering website, then it is it actually belongs to a corporation that makes money. But uh, government uh, government uh, uh, organizations organizations that are run by the by the government in various sectors are have very piss poor, very piss poor uh, websites. Uh, so I'm here on the journal of astrobiology.com. It's actually a pretty okay looking website for, uh, I've seen worse, I've seen the worst. Worst websites belong to the government organizations and it's, uh, it looks okay for, uh, to think about it. And uh, it says that the, basically the writer is 
saying that all these international scientists are not true, their evidence is not true, uh, but I think uh, it can be true, it can be true because there is no evidence against it at the moment, uh, and it's pretty clear to see that it's not sophisticated outlet for high impact science. No, this, this is not a way, to, uh, if you, your representation doesn't matter uh, if you are speaking the truth or not. Uh, so that's a bogus point. On its website, the journal seeks uh, research papers on topics like protecting Earth from Martian organisms so that it can present all points of view on the biology of Mars. Uh, so this writer again tries to uh, detract uh, uh, the thing by, by calling about Martian organisms, but here's the thing: uh, when the first when the first few uh, flights were done at Apollo, they did quarantine uh, Mr. Neil Armstrong. Neil Armstrong was quarantined for a few uh, few months uh, before he could go back to his family after coming back from the moon, because uh, at that time also they thought that space might contain some space and moon might contain some organisms. So it's not entirely impossible that you may think about Martian organisms. Uh, uh, so this again is a fault of this writer. In regards to the mushroom paper, uh, mysteriously entitled Evidence of Life on Mars, uh, the editorial board claims that it recognized the controversial implications and so it had six independent scientists and eight senior editors peer review it. Uh, now, here is the thing. Evidence of life on Mars? Question mark. So, whenever you see a question mark on an article, it means that it is speculative. It is speculative. So, uh, here uh, I would like to say that the main evidence that, that uh, these international board says that uh, there is life on Mars is actually speculation, and also, based on that speculation, this woman is also making this speculation that it's hoax news. Uh, so, fake news over fake news. <laughs> this is a fake news over fake news. Uh, three of these the reviewers rejected the paper outright, and one editor, which means that six independent scientists and three of the paper, uh, three reviewers rejected the paper outside and one editor was so vehemently opposed to the paper that he apparently still wanted to get rid of it even after majority approval. Uh, nevertheless, the paper was ultimately published and the journal's press release is unusually kind, asking simply why the opposition to publishing evidence. Uh, but it is not evidence because uh, the question mark is there. If there is a question mark, then it is not exactly evidence, it is speculative. Uh, it also alludes to religious motivations as a source of such irrational uh, opposition. Uh, I don't get it. Why the religious motivations? I don't get it. But don't be fooled by this uh, seemingly harmless question. This paper is not jam-packed with irrefutable uh, evidence and watertight reasoning, despite admitting that similarities in morphology are not proof of life and that their evidence is circumstantial and unverified, the authors claim that the answer to their paper's title is a resounding one, uh, yes, resounding yes. Uh, we admit, says the co-author Regina Das, uh, a mycologist at uh, Pondicherry University of India, we don't have a smoking gun, no photos or cells or cellular structure. Uh, because it is uh, just a photo, <laughs> you can't have a cellular structure right now. There is no definitive proof, only proof, only a lot of evidence which shouts biology. End quote. In a particularly ironic side note, Das uh, answered a question on research gate recently by warning it is not a very good idea to decide just by observing macromorphological macro features while NASA itself hasn't responded to these new claims, its scientists have already researched the phenomenon you can see in the photo above. Uh, there's nothing here. There is nothing here. Uh, oh, come on. There is nothing on that photo. Instead of mushrooms, NASA calls them blueberries. 
blueberries. But unlike the authors of this new paper, no one at the space agency actually thinks these tiny spheres are a sign of life, let alone a growing fruit or vegetable. They're not a growing fruit or vegetable. They, they actually do look like uh, mushrooms, but uh, the fact is that we don't have enough proof of it. Uh, in 2004, the Opportunity rover discovered millions of these blueberries and upon analysis. Analysis, uh, they were determined to be composed of the iron oxide hematite. Hematite is an, uh, is an iron ore. Uh, about 3 centimeters across, uh, 1.2 inches, these balls of solidified hematite were unla unlike anything ever seen on Mars before, embedded in the Martian rock like blueberries in a muffin, NASA explains that these spheres of hematite were solidified in the presence of water and then slowly released by erosion. Uh, in quote, says, we are not disagreeing with NASA. NASA has come of the, has some of the uh, <laughs> greatest scientists and engineers in the world, of course, says the co-author Vincenzo Rizzo, a biogeologist, working for the National Research Council, uh, uh, in quote, however, hematite is also a product of biological activity, just as stromatolites are fashioned together via the action of cyanobacteria, fungi, and bacteria also help to cement terrestrial hematite together. We should expect that the same biological processes uh, helped fashion hematite on Mars. So, the thing is, NASA is claiming that hem this hematite can only be formed under the presence of water. So, if our water was there, it might be possible that there was some day, uh, there was possibility of life on Mars. However, it is not right now because we can see that uh, whatever the authors might say, it certainly seems as though they do not see eye to eye with the world's leading experts. Uh, hence, many on Reddit have been quick to dismiss these studies, saying it appears to be vanity published uh, without many standards at all. One user says uh, brutally, the journal and article are both garbage. There's a community of self-proclaimed astrobiologists who use the same crackpot tricks. Uh, mostly uh, misrepresenting, uh, misrepresenting mundane photos of b basic geological uh, features as hard evidence of life, and have been for decades. They've been pounding that drum since at least the mid 1990s. Uh, end quote. The truth is, humans are notoriously irrational when it comes to seeing Mars as it truly is. Uh, that's one statement I would say, yes, humans are, of course, they have to be uh, irrational or uh, think of it in, uh, be, be skeptic about it. In 2014, NASA was actually sued, sued by a self-proclaimed astrobiologist for not investigating what he clearly saw as a mushroom-like fungus on the surface of Mars, it turned out to be nothing more than a rock. Well, what can I say? By the looks of things, this newspaper is just another thump on the same hollow notion. So, this article basically completely uh, disapproves of the whole thing, but <laughs> I myself disapprove the writer <laughs> as a very good person uh, because uh, she has this uh, <laughs> weird uh, uh, persona. But anyway, uh, <laughs> I, I don't know why do these uh, people have this crazy Twitter persona uh, of, uh, of feminist cat ladies. But uh, let's see what happens uh, if we get life on Mars or not. Uh, and it is also said that uh, life on Earth is very secluded from the rest of the uh, galaxy. So if there are aliens, they will probably never reach us in our lifetimes. Uh, anyway, this is it for today. Uh, Please like and subscribe if you like this content. Uh, I'll be back with more reviews and more quiz <laughs> next time. Peace.